Hello and welcome to Algebra 1. Today we are starting Chapter 10 and Chapter 10 is called Radical Expressions and Triangles. Today's focus is on 10-1 and we will be simplifying radical expressions. This is an extension of what we've already started to do since we've been solving uh, quadratics that have answers that are in radical form and so some of this should be fairly familiar already. So first of all, what is a radical expression? So a radical expression is anything containing a radical sign, and so we have what a, you see here what a radical sign is. Now lots of times we call this a square root, um, so the difference is that there can be another number in this area right here, so if we might have a cube root or a fourth root, and so when you see it without the little number right there, it is a square root. And so there would be a 2 there. We don't write the 2, though. And so that symbol, though, itself is called a radical sign. The number underneath it is called the radicand. And the radical expression is said to be simplified if the radicand contains no perfect square factors other than 1. Um, so, for instance, if we had the square root of 12... 12 has a factor of 4, which is a perfect square number, so that is not simplified yet. And to simplify those things, we use the product property of square roots, and it actually is the product property for radicals. It works for cube roots, fourth roots, everything like that. And so the symbol part is if we have the square root of a times b, we can split that up into the square root of a squared of b. So if I have the square root of 12, I could rewrite that as the square root of 4 times 3. Still says the square root of 12. Okay. My pen doesn't want to work over there. Square root of 4 times 3. And then so the product property says that's the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Square root of 4 is 2, so we get 2 square root of 3. That is then simplified because 3 has no perfect square factors. The only factors of 3 are 1 and 3. So let's simplify these. For starting out with the square root of 52. And so your perfect square factors, if you don't know them, you might want to make a list. Um, there, so 1 squared is 1, and 1 does not help us simplify anything, but 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 36. So these are our perfect squared numbers. These are numbers that you can take square roots of. I probably skipped one. Nope. Okay. Um, so you really should probably know all the way up to 12 squared. And so the question is, do any of these numbers go into 52? And you really want the largest. It will help you. And so 4 goes into 52. So we could rewrite 52 as 4 times 13. That still says the square root of 52. And my product property says that I can split that up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 13. And I know that the square root of 4 is 2. So then that is the square root of 52 simplified. Okay. Um, that is one way to write it out. I often do a little more of like a tree branching thing. Um, square root of 27, which one goes into 27? Well, so it's 9 times 3, square root of 9, square root of 3. And so thus it's 3, square root of 3. Okay. Doesn't matter how you write it. Square root of 150. Uh, 25, square root of 25, square root of 6, 25 times 6 is 150, and square root of 25 is 5, square root of 6. So we're taking the square root of that first one, keeping the second one, because it doesn't have a perfect square root to it. So what happens if we have something a little more complicated here? So really what you're looking at, based on that product property, is this is the square root of 45, times the square root of a to the fourth, times the square root of b to the fifth, times the square root of c to the sixth. And you're going to try to simplify all of these parts and put it back together. Well, so 
9 goes into 45, 9 times 5, so it would be 3 square root of 5. And I want to split up A, and there's a special way we want to do this here. I'm going to split this up into the square root of A squared and the square root of A squared. And the reasoning is because what's the square root of A squared? It's just A times A. So no more square roots. For B, I'm actually going to split it up into three things. I'm going to do a B squared, a B squared, and a B. Because I have to have five Bs, B to the fifth. And so remember, if I am multiplying, you add. So I'm going to do 2 plus 2 plus 1 there. There's my 5. Well, so this becomes B, B, and the square root of B. All right, and the square root of C to the 6th, I'm going to break up again into three parts. C squared, C squared, and C squared. If I add all those squareds together, I get my C to the 6th. The square root of c squared, though, that's just c, c, and c, no longer under the square root. So then out front, we're going to pull our numbers that are no longer under the square root, so we're going to have a 3, a squared, b squared, c cubed, square root of 5b. So the stuff that's no longer under a square root is out front. And the stuff that's still under the square root is still under the square root. That, then, is your answer. So let's look at another one, okay? And so really understanding the reason why I split them up into twos. Okay, so the fact that, you know, the square root of x squared is x. And we're going to talk about that a little more in class next time. Um, but so if I can get something with a squared, then I know it cancels my square root. So for instance, starting here with r, square root of r squared, well, that's just r, no longer under square root. So 32, uh, 16 times 2 is 32. Square root of 16 is 4. So there's 4 square root of 2. Uh, so then the s's, I want to break this up into s squared and s squared. Because if I multiply those together, I get s to the fourth, because you multiply, you add your exponents. But individually, they both break down into s's, and they're no longer under a square root. I'm going to do the same thing with t, except I'm going to rewrite it correctly, huh? t to the fifth. So I want to have t squareds. So I can have two t squareds, and there's four t's, and so then I have to have one that's just a t. But the first two break down into t's, and the last one stays a square root of t. So I'm going to look at everything that is out front of, are not, no longer under a square root. So it looks like we're going to have 4r s squared t squared, and then things that are still under a square root square root of 2t. So it's really using that product property and breaking down the individual parts. So we also have a quotient property. Okay, So if you have a fraction under a square root, then you can break it apart, square root of the top, square root of the bottom. Really helpful when you are simplifying uh, square roots of fractions. If we finish this problem over here, you get 7 halves. So, uh, the, the uh, math gods, or whoever, whoever it is that deemed that we will do math a certain way, have decided that you can't have a square root or radical sign in a denominator for a final answer. Okay? They have deemed it um, not of the proper math etiquette. And so we have to do a process called rationalizing the denominator to get rid of that. So if you have a final answer that has a radical sign in the denominator, you then have to rationalize the denominator to get rid of that. And the way that we do that is that we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same expression. And so just for instance, if we have 5 over the square root of 2, what you end up multiplying by is the square root of 2. So 
anything over itself, okay, square root 2 over square root 2, that is 1 equals 1. So if I multiply by 1, I'm not changing my fraction, right? Anything times 1 is itself. So that's why we do this. And the reason I picked what I did, so on top we'd have 5 squared to 2. On the bottom what I end up with is something times itself ends up as squared, but then a square root and a square cancel, and we're going to get 5 squared to 2 over 2, and we no longer have a square root in the bottom. So that is the process of rationalizing the denominator. All right, so you might simplify first. So if you're looking here at the first one, square root of 12 over square root of 5, square root of 12 simplifies. So it is 4 and 3. So it's going to simplify into 2 square root of 3 over the square root of 5. Well, we can't have that square root of 5, so we're going to multiply by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5, which is 1, so I'm not changing my problem. So on top, we have a 2 square root of 15. So you can multiply the things in front, and you can multiply the things underneath, but you can't multiply the things in front with the things underneath. Okay. On the bottom, so if you actually multiply those together, you'd get the square root of 25, and the square root of 25 is... 5, no more square root in the denominator, and that's simplified because the square root of 15 does not simplify. Okay. So if you're looking at something like the bottom one here, square root of 8 simplifies. So you might go ahead and simplify it first. Square root of 3 in over, this is going to be 2 square root of 2, because this is the square root of 4 square root of 2. So when you multiply, you only need to multiply by the square root of 2 because that 2 out front is fine. There's nothing that says you can't have a 2 on the bottom. They're saying you can't have the square root of 2 on the bottom. So on top, you're going to multiply those together and get the square root of 6 in. On the bottom, you have the 2 out front. Then these become the square root of 4, which is also 2, so times 2 square root of 6 in over 4. Okay, so one more time on the bottom, this 2 times 1 is what makes that 2, and then the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4, which is that 2, and we're multiplying them together, so that's how you get your 4 on the bottom. So, upping it just a little bit, what happens if there's a binomial in the denominator, okay? So to do that, what we have to do is we have to multiply by the conjugate. And so the conjugate is just the same binomial with the opposite sign in the middle. It is patterned after differences of squares. So if you have x plus y, the conjugate is x minus y. Or if you have x plus 3, the conjugate is x minus 3. Or if you have y minus 6, the conjugate is y plus 6. Okay. So all of these have a binomial on the bottom. So there's no simplifying you can do ahead of time. We're just multiplying by the conjugate, which is 5 plus the square root of 2. 5 plus the square root of 2. And then on the top, you're distributing because this is a fraction bar and it groups. So we have 15 plus 3 square root of 2. Remember, you can multiply stuff outside and stuff inside, but not stuff outside with inside. On the bottom, you're foiling because you have this binomial times this binomial. So first is 25. Outside is a positive 5 square root of 2 minus 5 square root of 2, minus 2. Okay, because you have square root of 2 times square root of 2, which is 4. So, because it's patterned after differences of squares, the two middle terms are going to cancel. And the two middle terms will always cancel, which is why you're multiplying by the conjugate, because then my square roots just canceled. And on the bottom, you have 23. So let's try that again. We're going to multiply by 2 minus the square root of 2. 
On the top, you're going to distribute. So we're going to get 6 minus 3 square root of 2. On the bottom, we're going to have 4. And then if we think about it, we know that this negative 2 square root of 2 plus 2 square root of 2 is going to cancel. So all I need then is the last, which is going to be a minus 2. And we get 6 minus the square there should be a 3 there, 6 minus 3, square root of 2, all over 2. Okay, so let's try one more. We're multiplying by 3 plus the square root of 7. On the top, we're going to distribute. I don't know what's wrong with my numbers here. So we're going to get 21 plus 7 square root of 7. On the bottom, we're going to FOIL. So first, we get 9. And then we know that that positive 3 square root of 7 minus 3 square root of 7 is going to cancel. So for last, we get minus 7, because it would be minus the square root of 49, which is square root of 49 is 7. We get 21 plus 7 square root of 7 all over 2. There we go. All right, so here is just a list of what has to take place for a radical to be simplified. So there has to be no factors other than one, no perfect square factors other than one. No more fractions under the radicand, so under, or sorry, under the radical. So if you have a fraction, you need to use your quotient property and break it apart. And that there's no more radicals in the denominator. So once all of those are true, your radical is simplified. Let me know if you have any questions. If not, we'll see you in class. Have a great day.